Welcome to review lecture 1.1. The objectives of this, upon successful completion of this unit, including reading your book, attending and paying attention to class or watching the videos, finishing the assigned homework and reviewing for themselves, the student should be able to correctly answer exam questions and problems related to the following topics. You should be able to distinguish between the types of charge and identify how charge can be transferred. Now, these lecture slides and videos are provided as is, as a courtesy to the students. They are not a substitute for reading the book, attending class, doing your homework, or reviewing and studying. In other words, you can't just watch the videos or attend class. You actually have to do something. Okay, so neutral charge is normal state of matter. If you take a plastic object that has un been undisturbed for a long period of time and hang it up by a thread, then you pick up another undisturbed plastic object and bring it close to the hanging object. Nothing happens to either object. Conclusion is no forces are observed, and we will say that the original objects are neutral. If you rub both plastic objects with wool or fur, now the hanging object tries to move away from the handheld object when you bring the two close together. The two glass objects rubbed with silk will also repel each other. So conclusion of this is there is a long-range repulsive field force requiring no contact, that's what a field force is, between the two identical objects that have been charged in the same way. If you rub an object with wool or silk and then measure the forces between them, you will find these forces are greater for objects that have been rubbed more vigorously and have more charge. The strength of the forces decreases rapidly as the separation between the object increases. Careful measurements indicates that the force decreases proportionally to the inverse of the square of the separation between the charged objects. So the conclusion of this is the force between two charged objects depends upon the combined or multiplied magnitude of the charges and inversely on the square of the distance between them. Now, if you think back, remember physics one, remember Newton's law of universal gravity? Uh, force equals G times M1, M2 divided by the square of the distance between them. It's the same type of law. Now, if you hold a charge that is rubbed plastic object over small pieces of paper on the table, the piece of the paper will leap up and stick to the object. A charged glass object does the same thing. A neutral object does nothing. Now, you probably have noticed this in the wintertime when you comb your hair and you put, put your comb down on the, on the counter and little pieces of fuzz and little pieces of lint stick to the comb. This is what was going on. So there, there is an attractive force between a charged object and a neutral or uncharged object. If you rub a plastic object with wool and a glass object with silk, hang both by thread some distance apart. Both objects are attracted to a neutral object that's held close. Conclusion of this is there is an attractive force between a charged object and a neutral uncharged object, just like we had from the previous slide. Now, these are checkpoints. Checkpoints should be answered at home by the students before the material is reviewed and lectured. Write the question your answer in your notebook so you can check off the answer and correct it in class or when you view the video. Now, the reason for this is this gives you a low stakes assessment of your progress in the class. If you do this and then and without looking this stuff up, answer these questions in the lecture slides without looking it up. And then you go over it in class or in, in the video and you find out you've answered most of them correctly, you're probably pretty much on your way to understanding the material. If you find out you made a lot of mistakes, maybe you need a little bit more review. And that means you can get this answer to your, whether if I prepared enough, which is the thing everybody always asks me, have I prepared enough? I can't tell you that. You, you're the only person who can determine that. And this is one of the ways you do that. Also, it's easy to do your homework. That gives you probably a chance, an idea that you probably know the material. If it isn't, maybe you need to review a little more. Studies show that it takes at least eight reviews to understand anything. So if you're only just watching the videos and reading the book and maybe doing the homework, you've done about 37.5% of that review. So in other words, three out of eight. That's probably what your grade's going to be in the course. You have to do the all eight. You can't skip anything like this. It doesn't work. People don't learn by just going over it once. It takes multiple times. Unfortunately, but that's the way it is. Okay, so a checkpoint. Charged glass and plastic objects hang by threads. An object attracts the glass object. If this object is then held to near a plastic object, it will. Now, whenever you answer any kind of multiple choice question, make sure you read the entire question and every answer completely, and then reread it. I know that sounds really obvious, but I've been giving multiple choice questions for many, many years, and you'd be surprised how many people don't read the question and don't read all the answers, and they just pick the first answer they think is right. Don't do that. Make sure you read everything carefully, pick the correct answer, and then reread the question to make sure that the answer makes sense, especially when you see anything like this on a question. This is a trap question, so be very careful with this. Now, for those who are, can't stand the suspense, the correct answer to that one is either A or B. There's not enough information to tell. The new object could have the same charge as the plastic object, which would then repel 
or it could be neutral and attract both charged objects, or it could have an opposite charge. So we're going to hang, rub a hanging plastic object with wool and then hold the wool close to the object. The object will actually be weakly attracted to the wool. A glass object that has been rubbed with silk will be attracted to the silk that was used to charge it. A rubbed plastic object is repelled by a piece of silk that was used to rub glass, and a rubbed glass object is repelled by a piece of wool that was used to rub plastic. So the conclusion to this is that the object starts out with equal amounts of glass charge and plastic charge, and rubbing somehow transfers one kind of charge between the object and the item that rubs it. This results in ionization or charge separation. The object and the item that rubs it have opposite charge and equal magnitude of charge. Now, the other objects after being rubbed will attract one of the hanging charged objects, plastic or glass, and repel the other one. These objects always pick up small pieces of paper. There are no objects that after being rubbed will both pick up pieces of paper and also attract both the charged and glassed objects. So the conclusion of this is there are only two types of charge, like plastic and like glass. There is no third kind of charge. Now you can transfer charge. You touch charge a plastic object by rubbing it with wool, touch a neutral sphere with the rubbed area of the object. The metal sphere will then pick up small pieces of paper and repel the charged hanging plastic object. Metal sphere seems to have appears to have acquired a plastic charge. Doing this with a glass object and silk does the same thing. So charge can be transferred from one object to another when the objects touch. Now, if you charge a plastic object and then run your finger along it, or charge a glass object and then run your finger along it, after you've done so, the object will no longer pick up small pieces of paper or affect other charged hanging objects. Similarly, the metal sphere will no longer repel the plastic object if you touch it with your finger. The so conclusion to this is touching the object with your finger removes the charge. We call this discharging. We also call it grounding, too. Now we're going to try a slightly more complicated experiment. We're going to take two metal spheres, and we're going to connect them with a plastic wire or rod between them. We're going to charge a plastic object by rubbing and touch it to the metal sphere, one of the metal spheres. Afterward, this metal sphere that was touched will pick up small pieces of paper and repel a charged hanging plastic object. The other metal sphere does neither, so the charge was not transferred to it by the connecting plastic rod. Conclusion of this is the plastic insulated the other sphere from a transfer of charge, so it is a material we'll call an insulator. Charges do not pass easily through an insulator. Now we're going to do the same thing before, as we did a minute ago, but now we're going to replace the plastic wire with a metal wire, different material. Again, we touch one metal sphere with a charged plastic object. Afterward, both spheres will pick up small pieces of paper and repel a charge hanging object, plastic object. This means the connecting metal sphere conducted the charges to the second sphere, so the metal is a conductor. The conclusion to this is charge moves easily through conductors. That's the second type of material. Metals are conductors. Charges will move easily through them. Glass and plastic are the other kind of material called insulators, and in them, the charges remain immobile. Now, if we do more experimentation, we will just demonstrate the charges neither created nor destroyed, only transferred and moved. We'll talk more about that later. Conclusion to that is the charge is conserved. This is a consequence of the law of conservation of mass energy. Charges have mass and energy, and mass and energy are basically two versions of the same thing, V equals E equals MC squared. Okay, so some conclusions. Frictional forces such as rubbing add something called charge to an object or remove it from the object. The process is called charging. More vigorous rubbing removes a, produces a larger quantity of charge. There are two and only two kinds of charge. For now, we will call these plastic charge and glass charge. Other objects can sometimes be charged by rubbing, but the charge they receive is either plastic or glass. Two light charges, plastic to plastic or glass to glass, or exert repulsive forces on each other. Two opposite charges, plastic to glass or glass to plastic, attract each other. The force between charges is a long range, that is a field force. The size of the force increases as the quantity of charge increases and rapidly decreases as the distance between the charges increases. Neutral objects have an equal mixture of both plastic charge and glass charge, the rubbing process somehow manages to separate the two. There are two types of materials. Conductors are materials through which or along charge moves easily. Insulators are material on or in which charges remain fixed in place. And charge is conserved. So now we're going to rename, we're tired of glass and plastic. Let's rename them. We're going to rename them positive and negative. And Ben Franklin gave us these names. If you rub a glass object with silk cloth, it will give both objects electric charge, and the glass, glass object's charge is defined as positive. If you rub a plastic object with wool or fur, it gives both objects electric charge, and the plastic object's charge is defined as negative. Now, we now have enough information. 
via the rule of law, law of attraction repulsion to determine the sign of everything else. With this rule, we can determine the sign of all charges in nature. We know the rule, likes repel and opposites attract. So likes repel, charges of the same type, either both positive or both negative, will repel each other. That's these two figures here. Unlikes attract, charges of opposite sign attract each other. That's the last one down here. Thus, if the sign of charge on one object is known, the direction of the electrical force on the object, other object will determine the sign of the unknown electric charge. So we're going to charge a glass object by rubbing it with a silk cloth. Charge on the glass object is positive by definition. If we suspend the object from an insulated thread so it can keep its charge and also rotate freely under the influence of a force applied by an unknown charge, we bring the unknown charge whose sign we wish to determine near the charged glass object. There are two possible outcomes. Either they will repel each other. If they repel each other, they're like charges. That means that the unknown is positive. Or they will attract each other. They are unlikes. Unlikes attracts to the unknown charge as a negative sign. Now, this only works with charged objects. It does not work with neutral ones. Matter, of course, is made up of atoms. As we all know, atoms are made of equal and opposite charges. The electrons are negative, protons are positive. These particles have an equal charge magnitude but opposite sign. An object that has equal numbers of electrons and protons has no net electric charge. If there is an imbalance of the numbers, then the object is then electrically charged. We call that ionized. An imbalance comes about by adding or removing charges. The protons in solids are fixed in place, so they do not move. Now, this is not true of plasmas or liquids or any type of things where there's a solution, like an, an acid or a base. The electrons are more or less free to move, so they get added or subtracted during the charge transfer process. So usually it's the negative charges that move. The positive ones are usually fixed in place, but that's not always true. It's not true of plasma. It's not true of liquids. It's not true of anything that's dissolved a solution, such as acid or base or salt water. When electrons are transferred from the fur to the plastic object, the plastic object becomes negatively charged by a certain amount. The fur becomes positively charged by an equal amount. The fundamental rule at the base of all electrical phenomena is that like charges repel and opposite charges attract. Balanced electrical forces exist between you and the Earth and everything else. And this is a very good thing because the electrical force is billions upon billions of times stronger than gravity. All matter is made up of charges, atoms with protons and electrons. But we are not stuck to everything around us. This means the attracting force and repelling forces cancel each other out. This is called electrical equilibrium or neutrality. The electrical forces acting on you normally balance each other out and cancel, cancel so they have no noticeable effect at all. The normal state of matter is neutral, where the charges balance that cancel each other, which is a good thing. Picture whatever you like with that annoying static cling everywhere. Have you ever opened a package with plastic and you've got the plastic somehow all charged up so you can't get the little pieces of plastic apart from each other like saran wrap or something like that? Food wrap sometimes can get stuck together where you can't get it apart. Picture what that would be like if that was the way the normal state of matter was. You would have a really hard time doing just about anything if it weren't for the fact that electrical charges normally balance each other out. Thank you.